Uh, my name is Henrik Sjöstrand. I work for a small company called IBM. I hope we don't need an introduction. Uh, I work here in the Gothenburg office, and we are around 110, 120 people in the office here in Gothenburg. Um, today I'm going to give a quick introduction to cognitive computing, or as IBM prefer to call it, uh, uh, lots of companies call it artificial intelligence, we usually call it cognitive computing or augmented intelligence. And I will take one case where we build uh, conversational bots or chatbots, which is a really hot topic today. Um, <coughs> and if you have questions, um, then uh, ask them, of course. Our CEO is called Ginny Rometti. A year ago, she said that IBM is setting out a new theme for 2016. She said, our solutions will be cognitive and our platform will be cloud with a deep industry focus. So what IBM is really focusing on now is developing cognitive solutions delivered by a cloud and with a deep industry focus. So what does cognitive really mean? <coughs> Cognitive systems, they understand the world by feeling and interacting, similar to us human beings. They understand natural language and other unstructured data, like all the images that we take with our phones and all the videos and sounds that we upload to, to YouTube, etc. And uh, <coughs> if we take an example, let's eat grandpa versus let's eat grandpa. This small comma is a vital or essential to grandpa. Either we're talking about cannibalism or we're talking about a really nice Sunday dinner. And the computer system has to really be able to distinguish between if we should eat grandpa or eat with grandpa. Cognitive systems, they also try to reason and they try to learn just like we uh, human beings as they are used. The more data you feed them, the better they get. If we look at a traditional system or a programmable system, then we write code. We write things like, if the thing has four legs and claws and meows and eats mice, yeah, then the thing is a cat. Everyone has written that kind of code. With a cognitive system, we say that, okay, we let the system read text. We can read Wikipedia, Encyclopedia Britannica. It looks at pictures. It reads stories on social media, and then it tries to come up with its own understanding of what is a cat, or what are the characteristics of a cat. It's really similar to how we train our kids. You know, when the kids are one year old, you take this book with the, or, what the bill book, and with all the colorful pictures, and you say, okay, this is a cat, it sounds meow, this is a dog, it sounds something else, yeah. So we train our systems just like we train our kids, really. So these are really cognitive systems. Uh, if you go out on the web, I mean, artificial intelligence is really the hot topic of today. We don't really like to talk about artificial intelligence. We usually call it augmented intelligence because we want to emphasize or extend the human senses. So we want to create computers that can make us human beings smarter and better, make better decisions. We should not try to replace human beings. We should try to kind of like fill in the gaps instead. So that's augmented intelligence. <coughs> okay, and at IBM we like challenges. So uh, in the uh, beginning of 2000, we set out for a new big challenge. We said we will try to win the Jeopardy game. And uh, <coughs> first we started to analyze what does a Jeopardy game actually look like. And we found that the best Jeopardy champions, they hit the button approximately 45 to 50 percent of the times. So 45 to 50 percent of the times, they are so secure that they know the answer that they hit the button. So we said that we need to hit the button 70 percent of the times. We need to hit the button more often, and we need to get the right answer exactly the same amount as a real Jeopardy champion. So we need to hit the button 70 percent of the times, and we need to get the correct answer 85 percent of the time. If we do that, then we can win. So our first approach was to use structured data. When we saw that the question, for example, was about movies, then we picked out some keywords from the question, and then we went and searched for, for it in the Internet Movie Database. And then we got 2% correct. 
That's quite far. Okay, 2% correct. So we realized, okay, we cannot win Jeopardy by using structured or a structured data approach. So then we used a keyword search, similar to most search engines do today, like Google and Amazon, or not Amazon, but uh, other search engines. So we took the, the, the question, and then we started to search using keyword search. And then we reached 16% correct. Still far. Okay, so we needed to come up with some other kind of search algorithm. We needed to actually understand the question in a different way. So let's just play Jeopardy. Genetics, as we use the word, was coined in a 1905 letter by William Bateson, who popularized this monk's work. Hand up the one who knows. Yeah, Gregor Mendel, good. Next one, IBM. Apple, different. Eh, in 1.9 seconds, Watson had answered the question. You're too slow. Think. So, I mean, realize we actually have left out keywords here. So the computer system actually has to understand he needs to fill in, quest fill in the blanks. Not just answer a question, but actually fill in stuff. Okay, next question. The animal for which this pro computer program is named is actually a red panda. Eh, 1.9 seconds. Yeah, Firefox. Last question. You know this one. In 1966, this company produced 706 million elements of this product. In 2010, it produced 36 billion. And they hurt when you step on them. Lego. <laughs> so, <clears throat> in 2011, we managed to beat the, the, uh, uh, the American uh, uh, Jeopardy champions. And since 2011, we have evolved our capabilities. We started out with these textual analy analytics and natural language processing. That's how we could win in 2011. We have added video and image and analytics using neural networks and uh, other types of machine learning. So we have, since 2011 and, and this uh, achievement, we have, we have continued developing the Watson capabilities a lot. And we have done some really cool projects. <coughs> For example, we have created the Chef Watson. So we have, we have let Watson look at different uh, cuisines, maträtter, uh, look at the ingredients, look at the chemical structure of the ingredients and see which ingredients go well together. And then it creates new dishes. So, for example, it can combine uh, cinnamon with uh, ginger or cinnamon with potatoes, for example. And it creates completely new dishes. So, if you Google for Chef Watson, you can actually go in there and say, okay, I want to have chicken tonight and it should be gluten-free and blah, blah, blah. And then it come up, comes up with a, uh, a new recipe for you. And, of course, we want to drink something, so we have done the same for drinks. <coughs> um, this, uh, this one is uh, a company called Local Motors. Have you heard about the bus Olli? This is a 3D printed bus. It was developed in only three months using crowdsourcing. So lots of people could actually give input and help developing this bus. It's an autonomous electrical, so self-driving minibus for around 10 to 12 people. IBM have contributed and made it cognitive. So it has a microphone and speakers inside. So when you step into the bus, it greets you with hello. And you can say, okay, hello, um, uh, I, I'm hungry, where can I eat? And then it says, okay, what kind of food would you like to eat? Yeah, I want to have some Italian. Yeah, okay, fine, there's some great Italian uh, restaurants down by the pier, for example. Would you like to make a table reservation? Yeah, fine, do that for me. So we have added some cognitive capabilities or augmented intelligence capabilities to it. Uh, another really cool thing is uh, a trailer that we did for an American uh, movie called Morgan. It's a horror movie. Anyone have seen it? Morgan? No? Uh, <coughs> this Hollywood studio came to IBM and said, OK, we would like to challenge Watson to create a trailer for this upcoming movie. And usually, when you create a trailer in Hollywood, you have someone who looks at the final movie 
and it takes maybe three, four, five days or even longer. And then they start cutting out the different pieces that should go into the trailer. So what we did was we taught Watson what is a horror movie. So we let it look at all those Carrie movies and Jaws and all those old horror movies. And it looked at the pictures, analyzed the pictures, and it looked at the sentiment of the spoken words. And then it kind of like started to understand what is a horror movie and what are really the scary parts of a movie. And then in 10 minutes, it created the trailer. So in 10 minutes, it looked through, it's kind of like, like fast forward through the whole Morgan movie, two hours, and then it picked out those 10 pieces that should go into the trailer. So that's pretty cool, right? <coughs> so that's some of the cool stuff that we have been doing with, with, um, uh, with Watson. And the good thing is that all those capabilities that we have built into the Watson system is actually available to you. Did you know that? Someone knew it? Yeah, great. So I'm going to show how to use them. Uh, IBM has a cloud called Bluemix. How many have heard about Bluemix? About half. How many have an account at Bluemix? Less than half. How many have logged into Bluemix today? Only me, okay. Let's change that. I want all of you to go home and build a chatbot tonight. Okay? So what you do is, if you want to use the Watson services, you register at bluemix.net. And there you have, you click on the Watson services, and then you have lots of different services, APIs. Okay. So you have, uh, <coughs> sorry text-to-speech, visual recognition, tone analyzer, retrieve and rank, which is a search engine, I will show that, and some other different services. And then, if you want to look at the, the uh, documentation, you go to something called the Watson Developer Cloud. So there is all the documentation, examples, demos, etc. And there's also the SDKs. So if you want to write the Node application, you download the Node SDK. If you want to write the Java application, go get the Java SDK. And if there's not an SDK for the programming language, no problem, because all is, everything is just REST APIs. So you can call it from basically any programming language. Um, <coughs> and since I have a little bit more time, I can actually show some of the APIs, or some of the services. Uh, so this is the Watson Developer Cloud, as you can see, Watson Developer Cloud. Uh, here you have the services. We can, for example, look at uh, Tone Analyzer, for example. So we click on Tone Analyzer. I'm teethering with my mobile phone, which is connected. Ah, and by the way, I'm challenging myself. I'm not just going to give one demo. I'm going to give two demos. Or zero. I don't know. Let's see if I can reload this page. <coughs> mm, det börjar bra. Jag behöver ha den här ändå för den är uppkopplad dit. Precis. Funkar inte den så funkar ingenting. Ja, men det här var ju bra. Annars, bilen går bra. Ja. Kan vi göra så? So you have so it will work so much better with the demos if I have internet connection. Ta da Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's give it another try. Tone analyzer. Um <coughs> So I can go into Tone Analyzer, I can read about the service, I can do try it out, I can find the developer tools, pricing, etc. 
By the way, all the services are free up to a certain limit. And for hobby projects, it's going to stay free. I don't think you will, will uh, achieve the uh, paid amount. Um, <coughs> so I click on the view demo and we can see the tone analyzer. Let's take an email message, for example. Come on. So here we have an example of an email message. Let's do an analysis of that email message and see how it's written. Then we can see that it's 59% anger, 11% disgust, 45% fear, 12% <coughs> joy and 60% sadness. Language style, analytical, 88%, confident, tentative, etc., etc. And then we can actually go down and look in this message and see, for example, where is the anger in this message? We click on anger. However, we are not doing a good job at selling it, and this is really frustrating. That's anger. Okay, joy. Do we have any joy? No, there was no joy. Sadness. Times are difficult. Our sales have been disappointing for the past three quarters for our data analytics product suite. We are missing critical sales opportunities. That's definitely sadness. We have used this API to analyze, for example, Harry Potter, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, to see the different characteristics of, of the other of characters. So for example, if you look at IBM's Watson analyzed Star Wars and reached some fascinating conclusions. Do you want to see? So let's scroll down. Jedi are the least neurotic characters. Unsurprisingly, the most neurotic characters will see three <laughs> C3PO. Obi-Wan ranks highest for intellect and modesty and last in immoderation and cheerfulness. Luke ranks highest for anger, dutifulness and morality. Han and Leia rank the highest for friendliness at spots, on spots one and two, respectfully. Maybe that's why they're such a good couple, etc. But Han is also extremely self-conscious. So you can do some fun stuff with text analysis. There are other... Um, other APIs. If I go back here, let's see if we can do text-to-speech, for example. Since I have some more time, I'm gonna see if I can. Uh -huh. Why doesn't the microphone work? Ah, who oh me? Okay. We'll see if we get some uh, audio from my computer. Manas, speeding go bra, huh? I don't think we have time. No. <laughs> sure. Shoot. Deep blue, yeah. <coughs> no, they actually, uh, we did one attempt in 1996 and then we lost. So we had, a, 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 in that case, it, it was a computer called Deep Blue, was a, a, a Unix machine. Uh, and in 1996, uh, unfortunately, we lost against one of these, I don't know if it was Karpov or Kasparov or whoever it was. Uh, and then we went home and rewrote the algorith algorithms, improved it, and then in 97 we managed to beat him. And it was not just one match, it was a couple of matches. So in chess you have a number of matches, and just like in hockey, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. But chess is a so much easier challenge than analyzing text. 
it's just mathematics. Uh, analyzing text is just like uh, getting internet connection, so it's almost impossible. <coughs> okay, so here we have, uh, I don't know if this is going to work um, uh, since I have so poor network connection. Of course, everything worked before I left home. So, Okay, so let's see if we can do speak on this or if it uh, goes out to dev null because I'm connected to HDMI. Okay, we lost it. Run it through. Ah, okay, yeah. You mean that? And then run it through tone analyzer? Or? Yeah, okay, we we'll skip this. Um, <coughs> and we go back to the presentation. So these are some of the, of the APIs that you uh, can use if you have a good internet connection. Okay? Enough. Now let's build the chatbot. <coughs> How many times have you called your bank, your insurance company, etc.? And uh, they say, okay, you are number 45 in line, and it's going to be two hours waiting time. That's happened way too often. The answer to those are chatbots, or conversational agents, or personal digital agents, or virtual agents, or whatever you call them. Uh, there is a service on Watson that is called the conversation service. I'm going to show you how to use that. Uh, we already have a number of chatbots uh, in production, for example, in call center support or for internal digital assistance. For example, in New York, if you check into the Hilton Hotel, you can meet Connie. She's a Watson-powered uh, robot, so you can go there and talk to her and ask her for recommendations for restaurants or, or, or other matters. Uh, Autodesk have put a chatbot on their support line, so if you have a problem with their products, you can go there and you start chatting with a chatbot, and it will actually try to find the problem for you. Usually it's about uh, license keys and all that stuff. And they have managed to cut their response times from days down to minutes using this chatbot. It supports 40 different use cases today. Uh, and there are some other banks, etc., that are using it. <coughs> I was asked by a Swedish organization called Svedavia, which is managing the 10 uh, public Swedish airports, if we could show what uh, uh, a chatbot could do for their internet. So uh, I'm going to show you how I built that chatbot. A personal digital assistant for airport employees. And the challenge was that we should create a simple demo that could support an airport employee throughout his or her working day. We should handle common questions and tasks. For example, punch me in when I arrive, report sick leave, answer salary, arrivals at gate, etc. This is what we usually call the short tail questions. This is like the 80% normal questions, the, the, the most common questions. They also wanted us to handle the long tail questions, which are the more complex questions. For example, what do I do in case of a bomb threat? How do I dispose of waste? How do I handle chemical spill, etc.? So we should handle both the 80% short tail questions and the 20% long tail questions. <coughs> so how did I do this? First, of course, I created a mobile app. I have that running on my iPad here. Uh, I connected this app to Bluemix, and I wrote a simple app controller, an, an orchestrator service. Oh, sorry. And then I connected that to the Watson service called the Conversation Service. And this is a service that manages the man-to-machine dialogue. So if you send hello, it can respond back, hello, how are you? I'm fine, okay, good to hear. Uh, can you reset my password? Okay, for which system? Yada, yada. So this service manages the man-to-machine conversation or dialogue. This is the short tail questions, the 80%. The rest... I used another uh, API or another service called Retrieve and Rank. And this was the same service that was actually used when we won Jeopardy. So it, has, it originates from the Jeopardy game. Uh, this is a search engine. 
and Svedavia wanted me to take their policy documents, a number of PDF files, and then populate them into the search engine so that we could handle these long tail questions. So I took some of the PDF files, imported them, and then I also created some training questions because this service then needs to know what are the typical questions that you could ask on this corpus, on this type of information. So I gave it a number of example questions so I could train it. And then you could add some other services like speech to text and text to speech. <coughs> and let's see what it looks like. So I will switch over to the iPad and see if that one has internet connection. Yeah, seems like. So we do new movie recording and we do the iPad. Oh. So, okay. <coughs> So this is uh, uh, an example of, of a chatbot. So when the Svedavia employee arrives in the morning, they can say, I am at work now. You send that to the conversation service, and the conversation service replies, OK, good to see you. I'm punching you in right away. Good. Uh, then, of course, uh, when is my next Pay check, right? Pay heck, pay check, pay heck. This is a live demo, right? Pay check. We send that to the conversation service and it responds This is your salary and vacation details. You have 15 days vacation with full salary and five days unpaid. Your next paycheck is due on Wednesday and you will receive that much amount of money. Great. And by the way, if you need, if you have any more questions, you could actually give this guy a call if you really need to talk to someone. So we have actually hooked up the, pers uh, the uh, competence profiles. Yep. What if I ask for pay heck? Uh, when is my next pay heck? When is my next pay heck? This is a salary. It's tolerant. And this is, and, and this is one of the good things, because this is also what I use to drive it from Swedish. So I have what's on conversation doesn't support Swedish yet, but you can run a translation service from Swedish into English, and you, can get, you get something, and then uh, you can feed that in. So I've actually been using this in Swedish as well. Uh, because... <laughs> Because this is a canned response, <laughs> and I have two responses, and it's random. So, enough questions. <laughs> <coughs> but then, of course, we can also... So these are kind of like the... the, the uh, let's take one more short tail question, if, if we can do that, okay? Um, when is next flight arriving at gate 11? So now I record that whole sound as a WAV file, and I send it off to the service. To the, to the speech to text service. And I do that over a mobile phone, and it's. Anars, Pilen, go bra? Yeah. Let's see if we get a response. When is the next flight arriving at gate 11? Pretty good, yeah. Next flight arriving at gate 11 is SK123 from Boston, arriving at nine minutes. Okay, so I, if I'm working at gate. 11, maybe I should go there now, okay? So these are kind of like the short tail questions. So let's take a long tail question. When is VIP service open? So I want to know when the VIP service is open. <coughs> That's not something that is in the short tail questions, but it's in the long tail question. So now I've taken, I've translated from audio into text, and I take the text and send it to conversation, and conversation says, okay, you need to go and search using retrieve and rank. So I search using retrieve and rank, and, I, and then I get this response. And if I click on the first one, I see that airport VIP service has the following opening hours. Yeah, pretty good. 
It can also handle more complicated questions. For example, um, <coughs> how far from the airport must a radio base station be in order not to require a special permit? Anyone knows? No? I know because I've done this demo a couple of times. So uh, I pick the first one. This is what I found for how far from the airport must the radio base station be in order not to require a special permit. I pick the first one and if I have some time I can read and see, okay, it's 3.5 kilometers away from the airport. You have to be, if you're going to set up a radio base station without a permit. Fine, okay, so how did we actually go about building this demo? How am I doing on time? Okay. Good, okay. So uh, we fimpa den, and then we go back here. So that's kind of like the demo, and let's see how, we, how I actually built this one. First of all, we need to train the bot. I use the conversation service available on Bluemix. You create a service and then it starts to ask you for something called an intent. <coughs> an intent is a purpose uh, or a verb, something that the user may ask or uh, give a command. So for example, I have report sick leave, I have report back after sick leave, and I have, for example, time report stop. So when and then for, for each of the intent, I need to give some examples of what the user may express. For example, I'm going home now, now I'm leaving now, I'm leaving work, I go home, I've stopped, please punch me out. Uh, usually five is enough. And using this, it creates a word vector, so it can understand what you actually are looking for. Fine, so I create a number of intents. Next. I create some entities, which is kind of like the nouns or substantive. Uh, in, the, in this case, I wanted to report spill. <coughs> so I created an intent called spill. Spill could be, for example, chemical spill, fuel spill, oil spill, etc. I had some other intents or entities called uh, incident type, accident, attack, damage, spill, etc., and some locations. So I created some of these um, entities. Then I go into the dialogue manager. And this is a graphical tool. So you start kind of like building up the conversation, the conversation tree. This is just a screenshot. So for example, up here in the left, if it says triggered by report incident, if the conversation service detects that I have, I want to report an incident, then it goes and see, okay, have I also submitted the type of incident? Yes. And have I also submitted a subtype of the incident? Yeah, etc. And then it kind of like traverses down the, the tree. If I have not submitted the type of incident, then it falls down here and it says, OK, what kind of incident would you like to report? So this is how you can like create the conversation flow <coughs> or, or the kind of like different use cases of your conversation. And then, as you start building out this tree, you can immediately test it here. So you can add some intents or, or uh, entities, and you can immediately test drive it here. OK, fine. We need to see some code, uh, or at least we need to see some JSON stuff. So for example, if I call this service with an input of hello, this is what I would, get <coughs> this is what I would get back. I would get the intent. And Watson, discover, uh, Watson Conversation has found, OK, with 100% accuracy or confidence, uh, this is a greeting. And we know hello is a greeting. And then it comes back with a text and says, hello, good, <coughs> good to see you. Fine. It also gives me something called a context. And the client needs to keep this. This is a state, because the conversation service is stateless. So it, pulls, it uh, provides a state, and I need to keep that uh, on the client. Fine, so this is a really simple uh, uh, back and forth. <coughs> if I ask for when is the next flight arriving at gate 11, it finds that the intent is arrivals at the gate with 98.6 uh, 
uh, conference, it has also found some entities, location, and the value is gate, and some numbers. So if I combine this gate with the value <coughs> of 11, then I, then, then I can provide an answer. Next flight arriving at gate 11 is yada yada. So I get that back to my client. If I go for the long tail questions, so for example, if I search for when is VIP service open, it says that the intent is book service, but only even less than 80%, so it's not really sure. And instead, it says an action, call, retrieve, and rank. So now if I get this action, and, and I have given it the name action, call, retrieve, and rank, so now my client should actually not output the text, but it should actually go call the retrieve and rank service. So let's go to the retrieve and rank service. <coughs> the retrieve and rank service is a search engine. Really easy to use. You get your documents, you get your PDFs, Word documents, HTML documents, and you just upload them. They are converted and the text, etc., is extracted. So you get the documents into the uh, Retrieve and Rank service. Then you upload some training questions. For example, I said, who are considered VIPs? How do I submit the VIP booking? Yada yada, is smoking allowed? Where are candles allowed, etc. That's the kind of uh, doc uh, <coughs> or information that they had in their policy documents. And then you have your documents here on the left, and you have your training questions on the right. And then Watson will select some of the training questions and actually start to challenge you or start asking you for questions. So we go through a ranking or a training process. Oi, ursäkta. So uh, I get a question back. For example, how do the airports use incident reports? And then it searches the texts and it gives me four different options and I need to rate these. So I say, is it bad or good or really good, excellent, etc. So it kind of like uh, it takes maybe an hour or something to go through this training process, and then you get something called the ranker, and the ranker is just an ID, and you use that when you call the retrieve and rank service. So let's look at the JSON output. When I ask the retrieve and rank service, for example, when is VIP service open? <coughs> I get the document back, I get the title, I get some search text, uh, I get the content in HTML, and it can also put bold, so it emphasizes the text, uh, and I get lots of other information, uh, and, and the conference score, etc. So I get a long list of the, of the different documents or sub-documents, uh, paragraphs in this, and then I can just display that. So this is how I built this, this uh, uh, demo for this customer. I used the conversation service for the short tail questions. I used the retrieve and rank for the long tail questions, the more complex questions. And then, of course, you can add some text to speech and speech to text. So how am I doing on time? Do you have 10 more? Yeah, yeah? OK. <coughs> questions on this? No? Mm. Um, no? More? Um, I actually took out those slides, but Google search uses keyword search. So it, it looks at the sentence, uh, it takes out the keywords, the most important keywords, and if the keywords are more unique and more close to each other, it gets a higher rating. And then it tries to find web pages or documents that has these keywords close. So it's kind of like an algorithm to do that. <coughs> um, we, we use other technologies. We use neural networks and other AI technologies to do the searching. So we have lots of different pipelines, which for ex one pipeline, for example, knows about geography. So it knows about countries and cities and that stuff. Another pipeline knows about time, so we can actually do time calculus, uh, time calculus, etc. So we use all of these different pipelines to, to do the search. So it is different. 
Uh, and and uh, as I said before, when we use the kind of like Google search approach for the Jeopardy game, we reach 16% uh, hit rate. And we had to go above 85. <coughs> exactly, yeah. You mean like the answer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can do that today. It's not in the APIs that you can access, but we do that today already. Uh, there is another service called the Discovery Service. So if you should build something today, you should actually look into the Discovery Service. And it really soon, it will be able to give you the passage really kind of like the, the, the only sentence where the answer is. So we, are, we have it in our labs, but it's not ready for uh, public use yet. So it's, it's um, um, soon. <coughs> yeah. So what you can do is, um, for example, if the user, w if, if I in the app would have detected that uh, all the users, they were satisfied with the first result, uh, then I could take that and feed that into the ranker, and the ranker would understand that, okay, the first result is really the best one, or the second is really the best one, or you could have like a thumbs up or thumbs down uh, and feed that information into the ranker, and then it would kind of like auto-tune to do better searches, yeah. Okay, so um, another thing, the next demo is something called the TJ bot. <coughs> we really want to get these APIs and these services out to everyone, also in the school. So we have built something called the IBM TJ bot. You can uh, download it and 3D print it, or you can download it or, or you can get a, a laser cut in paper, or you can actually buy it on Adafruit and some of the other uh, web, web shops right now. And uh, if, we have, if we're lucky, then we actually have the first Swedish TJ bot on stage ever. Um, so, if we are lucky, then we are up and running, okay. So I will show you what it looks like. I built this, I 3D printed it, and I soldered the last part of it during lunchtime today. So this is really... Ta-da! Do like that. You see? Okay. So what it actually does now is the microphone is listening. It takes the the words and it streams it, real time streaming to the via my mobile phone to the Watson service, and the Watson service immediately comes back with what it thinks I'm saying. So you can see it's kind of like picking up all this stuff I'm saying. I should actually get rid of the microphone. Marcus, so. and I should actually put that here. Okay. James. Hello. How can I help you? Who are you? Hi, I'm James. I am a 3D printed IBM TJ bot. My body is made of plastic, but inside me is a Raspberry Pi and plenty of wires. I like to tell jokes and help you with stuff. What can you do? You can ask me to tell you a joke. 
Okay, tell me a joke. A robot walks into a bar. What can I get you? The bartender asks. I need something to loosen up, the robot replies. So the bartender serves him a screwdriver. Ha ha ha. Okay, see you later. <laughs> James. Hi. What's the weather like? The weather in Gothenburg is like rain shower with a temperature of 4 degrees. The wind is 14 kilometers per hour, which makes it feel like 1 degrees. <laughs> What's the weather in Stockholm? The weather in Gothenburg Stop. is like rain shower with a temperature of 4 degrees. The wind is 14 kilometers per hour, which makes it feel like 1 degrees. <laughs> What's the weather in Miami? The weather in Miami International is partly cloudy with a temperature of 27 degrees. The wind is 13 kilometers per hour, which makes it feel like 27 degrees. What's the grass cutter doing? The lawnmower is home, charging. It has been doing it for 40 minutes. Battery is 100%. The rain sensor says it is not raining. Thank you. Okay, see you later. Okay, so that's everything for me. I hope that you will go home and build your own bot, right? Anyone wants to log into Bloomings and build their own bot? Yeah? Thanks.